Hey, this is Anthony Ha with TechCrunch, and I am here with Clint Gordon Carroll and Alan Peacock from uh, Space Monkey. And so, uh, you guys actually have like pretty interesting titles at the company. What, what are your titles? So I am uh, Captain Science, actually. I, I kind of lead the, the engineering efforts. Uh, yeah, I mean it's not that interesting, but chief product guy. Um, I mean, the only way You're I can the get, guy, the only so way I can get a C level C level uh, title around this place is uh, <laughs> throwing the guy, and then they were like, okay, you can be chief product guy. So. And you're also both co-founders. Yep, co -founders. both co-founders of Space Monkey. So uh, tell tell us a little bit about what Space Monkey is. Yeah, you bet. So Space Monkey is. Uh, kind of our, our way of disrupting the cloud. Uh, we want to take the, the data center or take the cloud out of the data center, uh, allow people to store large amounts of data, um, you know, terabytes of data um, at a very low cost, affordable way. And the way you do that is through these devices. Right, so this device is the data center in your house. Uh, it, it talks to other devices like this to, to provide a reliable storage network and gives all of the cloud benefits without the the really high cost of the data center. So talk a little bit more about kind of how, how it actually works and then you know what are what are the, the big benefits for the user. Sure, sure. So so how it works is you you get this device, you plug it into your house, it comes with a subscription, uh, ten dollars a month you get a terabyte of space, which is about ten times cheaper than you would pay normally in the cloud. Uh, you get a piece of client software that installs on your laptop or on your mobile devices. Uh, you can drop data into it just like you would any of these other cloud services. You can share it, access it remotely. Um, in the background, that device is safekeeping the data. It's making copies of it after it's encrypted, storing it out to the network so that even if your own device fails or if lots of the devices fail, it's still safe. Mm -hmm. So I think you know the shorthand that I've, that I've used and I've seen other people use is sort of a P2P Dropbox. I mean, is that... Seem, does that seem pretty fair? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a quick way of of, of, of making it boil, boiling down the technology behind it. But there's more to it. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's basically the ability to share and store data, uh, and and on a very distributed peer to peer network. So and and I know this is another thing that you guys have had to talk about um, before. But you know, I think it's sort of an important point about. Ta tell us a little bit more about who you see your user base as, because I mean, you know, there are a lot of people who use, you know, services like Dropbox. It's not just a Dropbox, sure. but, but services like that who, you know, maybe have issues or don't have issues. But you know, it's not like there's like necessarily a sense that there's a lot of people sort of saying that there are big shortcomings. Yeah. So, so the biggest one that we hear is is from people who have a lot of data. So they've got several hundred gigs. Uh, it's just too expensive and too slow to get that into the cloud, and so. With a device like this, the transfer is fast. You don't have to leave your laptop on uploading to the cloud or downloading from the cloud because it moves quickly over your own network to that device. And then in the background, you know, you shut that down. In the background, that's doing the magic for you of making the copies out there so that it's safe. Mm -hmm. So, lots so of people with lots of data. That's not necessarily a specific, it's just a, that's just sort of a broad. Yeah, broad it's, it's a very generic. Yeah, no, it's yeah. a very generic market opportunity. But but the reason why it's an interesting market opportunity is is the user generated content is growing exponentially. People are taking photos and videos with their smartphones. Uh, people are moving more uh, even away from laptops to mobile devices where their homes are you know a couple tablets and and some smartphones, and those have inherently smaller. Uh, storage space, but they're generating content, so where does that content go? It makes a lot of sense to have a place that you know, can be accessible, central, uh, shareable um, you know, for, for that type of family. So it, it's a generic market, but we see a trend, and that trend is the amount of data people are generating or creating over time. So you guys launched, I mean, or in the sense of being at the launch conference and sort of announcing that you exist um, a little over a year ago. Um, so can you kind of talk about what you've accomplished in the intervening year and sort of when we might actually be able to buy one of those? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, have built an incredible amount of technology over this past year. Uh, we have focused a lot on building a system that lets us not only keep these things online and keep them running, keep them safe, but lets us monitor them, uh, make sure that, that they're healthy, um, as well as be able to remotely update the software on these without the user ever needing to download you know, something or, or update the software themselves. So that's all been rolled out. The storage network itself is, has been rolled out as well. We've got you know, uh, devices spread from coast to coast as far um, west as Hawaii, as far east as, uh, as Boston. And uh, this network is, is storing data for people, and people are putting content in it. And it's, it's a surprisingly difficult problem. I mean, you'll see this demo that, that Clint will do. It's simple, right? It, it shouldn't be surprising. It shouldn't be hard. Mm -hmm. But the amount of stuff that we've had to do behind the scenes to build a peer-to-peer -peer distributed storage system on top of 
our own hardware mm -hmm. with clients for Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, and iOS, it's, and, and a web client. It's a tremendous amount of work, and, and we're getting close to release. Yeah, um, yeah, getting close to release is important. Uh, we have a few announcements. Maybe we'll even talk about it here on, on the show today. So yeah, let's. What are, what are these? Uh, well, uh, one of them is is we are getting ready to, to uh, kick off our Kickstarter campaign for, oh, okay, for pre-orders. Um, you know, we think it's a great platform for uh, getting good communication to early customers, early adopters, uh, understand what they need, some of their needs are, as well as communicating out what the product is, and uh, that should be starting in a few uh, few days, a few weeks. Was that sort of always the plan to have? Yeah, a we were, we were yeah. All, definitely. But then when Kickstarter changed the uh, the rules on hardware, um, okay. we had to pull back, and we we're like, okay, well, no more. You, know, you have to have the product working and ready. Um, you know, you have to be closer in your schedule. Risks have to be reduced, and and that's actually right. been a big piece. You know, I spent a, a, some time in China, making sure that you know production was ready to go. We all had to make sure that we had all of our vendors and uh, and component suppliers put together and. It's been a, a lot of work, but it's been it's been great. It means that risk is gone. So when you do Kickstarter and you, you decide to uh, support this campaign and, and help us get this product out there, you don't have to worry about like an 18-month wait. Not like any company's done that before, but you know, <laughs> th there won't be that type of wait. Right, right. Um, and and so you know, in terms of building out that network, I mean, so by the time you actually have sort of a product on the market, well, sort of the first customers, they'll be able to sort of turn oh. it on and there'll be enough of a network oh, yeah. that all already, that sort of, already uh, today all those advantages will be there. Okay. Yeah. Already today, that's that's in place. Uh, it's we, We've got enough devices out there that, right. you know, and we, we have some internal milestones for how many we want to get to before Kickstarter right. and before this is released to the public. Yeah, I mean, when we when we first started, we you know we went to Best Buy and we bought a couple of devices that made by larger manufacturers, hacked them, put our own software on them, and and we started our own like alpha network based on hardware that we hadn't developed. And now with Kickstarter, the goal is well, this hardware um, is a little bit faster than what you can get there, and and it's a little bit better. Um, you know, we need the support of the community to help us get into production. I mean, these things are you know. On a small scale, are expensive to build. So. Right, right. But yeah, let's let's actually see it see it in action. Yeah, on you the, bet. So we're going to try it out on the laptop, right? Yeah, yeah. You bet. This is my laptop uh, using my Space Monkey, which is in um, which is in Salt Lake. It's not this one that's on the table. Um, but yeah, here's uh, here's a web view of, of of my file system. So I've got a documents um, folder. It's got a variety of. Um, you know, other folders, all of our Space Monkey stuff, branding assets, those types of things. Um, if I'm on my desktop, I can uh, I can go to uh, to Space Monkey. I can launch my Space Monkey um, client, and uh, looks like the resolution has made it a little small, but that's okay. We can click off. We can get rid of the yeah. menu. Yeah, we can open. Oh, there we go. There it is. All right. So I can open the uh, the um, the menu here. Uh, open the Space Monkey folder, mm -hmm. uh, just like uh, any other cloud service that has a desktop client. You know, you see a file system view. This is right. actually these folders are not on my laptop. They are um, not cached. Uh, they're sitting on 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 uh, on my drive in in Salt Lake City. So I can go to. Uh, you know something like music. I can open uh, folders. I can even point my iTunes folder or iTunes uh, library to this to this folder, so I can have hundreds and hundreds of gigs worth of of music um, and, and make it available. So um, let's see. Let's just grab something here, open it up. Trying to find something cool. Yeah, something cool, right? Um, man, I got three kids. I'm so not <laughs> cool anymore. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, I mean, yeah, hit hit the play button. Um, and that's being streamed from from my my Space Monkey device. Now, granted, a lot of people may go offline. You might be going on an airplane or something like that. Right. We can actually take um, take a file. So let's just go back to the Documents folder. Um, and maybe you need a set of documents uh, online, offline type type experience. You can click on on uh, some of. Let's go to uh, Branding Assets. Or actually, in the Design Space, we have um, I've got a folder that has been pinned. So you can right click on any folder. Mm -hmm. And you can pin uh, any file that you want to keep on your on your machine at all times. So that little check mark is showing that it's pinned. So I right click, okay. hit the uh, space monkey, and I can actually unpin this. But uh, I, I don't, you know, I want to keep it local so that access to that file is is always available. And that happens to be a, a special edition version of of the space monkey device. Okay. And and this model is actually really important because you know we're talking about a terabyte of space, and most laptops certainly, you know, my MacBook Air doesn't have a terabyte of space, so. The model that most cloud drives have right now is a full sync of all the data back right. and forth. That wouldn't work with this model, right? You'd mm -hmm. have to 
exclude a whole bunch of stuff that you normally have access to. So with the pinning that he showed, you know, you, right. you, you have that, but for files that you don't have space for, you have access to those as long as the network's available. Right, okay. And even if the device fails um, or breaks or, or gets unplugged, um, you have the extra copy out in the storage network that you can right. start accessing and reading from as well. So and immediately? Yeah. Or, okay. yeah, I mean, there's a, a little bit of latency there, of course, right. as, as it's going and grabbing the, the little tiny pieces and, and then, right. and then so putting it to back. Right. But yeah, I right. mean, it, it should be as, as quick as, as it possible. Yeah, we, we want to make sure that, that you can get to your stuff even if the power has gone off at your house while you're on your business trip, right? And so, like Clint was saying, he's, he's talking to a space monkey that's in his house, but really he's talking to the space monkey network. Right. And so that's composed of not just the device in his house, but all the devices. Okay. Sounds cool. Well, I look forward to trying it out, and uh, thanks for coming by. Yeah, thanks Appreciate for having it. us.